Hello everyone, welcome to plot number one. Thank you very much for joining me, I really appreciate it. So, I've been busy in the last few weeks. One, I've been doing some sort of TV and movie background extra work. And in between that, I've been coming down the allotment, plot number one, to dig some soil, dig out the plastic and glass, etc., and uh, prepare the ground for planting some fruit trees, some apples and pears, I've also made a, a short pathway, mulched it, which I'll explain in a while. But first of all, apologies in advance for any noise that's uh, coming from the traffic behind me. I do get quite a lot of traffic on that road, but it's one of the things you have to accept. I've got the plot for free for a year. Let's see what I can do in a year. And uh, we'll see how we get on. Uh, what have I done? I've made a pathway, I've planted some fruit trees, I've planted some globe artichokes and various other bits and bobs. Let's turn you around and I'll give you a tour around. The entrance is here right on the corner. I've mulched it to six inches with wood chips. I've got my first bed down here on the left. And in front of that here, in front of me, I've got my elderflower tree still waiting to go in. I haven't found a space yet, but uh, I've got something in mind. So over December and January, I built those terrace beds and I've planted some hedging. Oh, the great tits are back. In and out of the nest box. I don't know if you can hear that. But, uh, they're popping in and out of their nest box, feeding. Not sure if they've got a batch of eggs yet, but uh, it's April 25th. So on the left here, I've got my first bed of soft fruit trees, black currant, white currant, some broad beans down the end. In the middle, I've got this pathway, which I haven't done anything with, so I've not dug it up yet to see what's underneath. I've not mulched it, I've not done anything with it. I haven't had the time. On the right hand side of the first pathway, I've got another soft fruit bed more black currants, but this time with white currants planted up. And that sits next to the raspberry bed with my raspberry support frame. I live in hope. <laughs> These are summer fruit in raspberries, so I won't see any till next year. So this is my one of my summer fruiting raspberry canes. Uh, as you can see here, I've cut the top off and it looks like it's dead. But I'm going to leave it in anyway for this season and see what happens. That's this one. I've planted six all together. Let's have a look at the others. That one looks dead as well, but uh, as I say, I'm going to leave it in. This is the third one. And then we've got some new growth. So this one survived, which is great. Nothing on that one either. But we have got some new growth here. So that's two out of the six that I can definitely say have made it through the spring and looks like the roots have taken and we've got some new growth. So uh, we'll see what happens. There's my Cox's Orange Pippin apple tree I planted in the winter. And then this was a pathway that was dug to remove some soil and then I left it bare. So first of all, I collected quite a lot of thick cardboard, as thick as you can get it removed as much of the cellar tape as I could, or the tape, packaging tape, and soaked the cardboard in water using the uh, water trough I'm lucky enough to have on site, and then laid, overlapped the cardboard to two to three layers all the way along this pathway. Once that was done, I collected about eight bags of leaves last autumn from my local park, eight large bags, very large bags, and I've completely filled up the, uh, the, cut, the pathway with these leaves. So hopefully that will rot down and it will all act as a mulch to stop any weeds coming through on the path. I have done that before and it does work. There we go, eight bags of slowly rotting leaves which should rot down quicker now they're out of those plastic bags and uh, just about had enough cardboard to cover that path amazing 
here I've got my Katie apple bush tree there that I planted in the winter and then this donated pear, I think it's pear tree it's still in a pot but I keep watering it every few days uh, I've got to prepare some more space for it further up the plot I'm hoping to do that any day soon now we've got a donated apple tree not sure what make it is uh, what apples they are but um, anyway I transplanted that last autumn October November and it survived and uh, hopefully I'll get some apples off it I did um, I did prune it in the middle to try and create more of a goblet shape no crossing over of branches hopefully and then we've got my conference pear tree that I planted last week in the middle there and over here we have another donated I think it's a pear tree it's quite old on dwarf fruit stock but it was donated so what can I say I'm having it so looking back down the plot from this donated pear tree you can see the other trees I've planted. I've left about two meters between each tree and each tree I'm expecting to grow not much taller than two meters to be honest with you. Uh, but on this ground in between I've still got lots of planting left to do. Obviously my intention is not to leave this soil bare in the long run but to grow some smaller uh, soft fruit trees, annuals, perennials, stuff like that. Over there you've got my potato plots. First early, second early and main crops are over there. There's the old railway bridge with the green grassy bank, daffodils on top. Come down the bank we see the brushwood I've collected. Quite a lot of the concrete pieces like crazy paving that I've collected from the plot, all from the plot. And then in front here we've got Another bed that I dug last week. I haven't yet planted it now. I'm going to plant onions, carrots, leeks, whatever I can fit in. And in front of me there, we've got some globe artichokes that I planted today. Um, really not sure if I'm going to, if it's going to work, if they're going to stay alive. It hasn't rained in northeast London for five weeks now, so not sure if they're going to survive but that's my globe artichokes mainly to feed the birds and the bees I don't like the taste of globe artichokes so probably going to let, let them go to flower uh, my wife likes globe artichokes I think so maybe if I catch them early enough young enough they'll be tasty I can take one or two for my wife Susie that's my asparagus bed I've pulled back the mulch, the straw mulch, to allow the asparagus tips to start to come through. I'm not going to harvest them, obviously, it's, uh, they're only one year old crowns. Um, but I've given them good water. They seem to be surviving, but really, I haven't got a clue what I'm doing, guys. So they might survive, they might not. Now I'm looking back down the plot to uh, just in front of my neighbour's shed. There you can see the terrace beds on the right. The pile of concrete rubble and so on that I found on my right going into the plot. And then on the left hand side there's a few tools that I use to collect rubbish and uh, wheelbarrow etc. And two trees, ash and sycamore, which I'm going to leave in for the moment because there's no big trees in the middle of the plot. So I'm going to leave those in, certainly for the moment. I want to attract as much wildlife as possible. I mean, I know these trees in the next 10, 20 years are gonna cast quite a bit of shadow on the plot, but let's see anyway. At the far end of the plot, I've collected some rotting wood, which I'm going to distribute around the plot. And if I swing you back round, you can see a massive pile of bramble tops that I've collected. 
Lots of people have asked me if I'm going to burn that lot. I said no. I'm going to let it mulch down. It might take a year or two, but it's going to mulch down and it's going to be used to spread across the forest floor until I've got my own sets of trees and shrubbery that creates a natural forest floor. That's in the long term, of course. planted some teasels today on the bank, about six of them, again to attract the wildlife, pollinators and so on. I hope they survive. It's quite um, bad soil on this bank underneath the grass but uh, I've planted six of them. Let's see if they grow up to survive this summer. This lovely green grassy bank sitting on a load of rubble. It's also sitting on some fallen trees of course and uh, type one or two aggregate horrible stuff underneath that with some topsoil thrown on top. Anyway the daffodils are almost coming to an end. They'll come back next year. Looking down the plot from on top of the green grassy bank. You can see how much progress I've made since November. Looking good. Looking down the plot. Hope you can hear that wren singing away. This is looking down the plot from the green, on top of the green grassy bank. Uh, if you think back to last November, I couldn't even get onto this plot. It was a disaster. But I've made quite a bit of progress. I've still got a heck of a lot to do, guys. So thanks for joining me on the ride. Oh dear. Thanks for joining me, guys. See you again soon on Marky Big Smoke.